What's good? Would you like to rock it with me, baby? Would you like to jump it with me, honey? Would you like to rock it with me, baby? Would you like to jump it with me, honey? Merchant, look at the half a man singing this song. <laughs> Sweet Calypso, music jamming for so. Come on, rock it with me, baby. Come on, jam it with me, Here. I said, well, darling, it's 10 o'clock now. Yes. <laughs> and I have a feeling that somehow you shouldn't be alone this way if there's no objection. I said, come and jump it with me, baby. Merchants are nasty, man. Welcome to episode 158 of the Corey Shepard podcast. Welcome back to everybody who's been listening. Welcome to all the new listeners. This is a, a podcast that you have to find good speakers to listen to. One another. I've seen people listening on the TV. I hope all the TV speakers good. You get a good pair of headphones, get some good speakers. We'll make sure your car audio good. It's a listening thing, you know. And the music banging. Listen, this episode is about the greatest voices in the history of Calypso. <laughs> it's, Cal- it's Calypso History Month, right? Thanks for everybody who was reminding me. I want to tell you too that everybody who tell me it's Calypso History Month and thing, and I just wanted to be known that on this little podcast every month is Calypso History Month. Just let it be known. <laughs> it's always Calypso History Month around here, but we're celebrating some of the greatest voices in the history of Calypso, and Merchant is one of them. Claire, I, 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 I can't tell you. One of the things about like researching songs, right? Is that it's real difficult to get a lot of credits for songs and Apple Music and the streaming platforms do YouTube worse. It's no credits at all. So sometimes you want to figure out who play on the song, where yeah, the song recorded, who's the arranger, who's the producer. They, they barely have any information about that. But that song Rocket All. I have a few merchants to play in this episode as one of the greatest voices in the history of the art form. But that ain't no that ain't no new song. Them songs is not no time today, you know. Them songs is yesteryear. And the song is so clear and the voice coming through crystal clear. You have to respect that. You have to respect that. What you do, I realized this week, when I was listening back to the podcast, a few, I went back and listened to episode one, right? <laughs> and I just want to take a quick moment to thank everybody who's been bearing with me because episode one, oh God, the quality, poor boy. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> when I hear episode, I say, well, you talking so slow. What's this going on? Episode one is just a little bit of a drag, but I appreciate everybody who stick with it, stick through it, and make it to episode 158. I appreciate it. One of the things I said in episode one that I will do that I've probably never done is I was talking about book reviews. I had said in episode one that a part of what I will do beyond talking about what's in the news cycle every week is expose people, or maybe just uh, expose myself, really, 
and tell you who I am, how I became who I am, uh, my journey and that type of thing, right? And I do all of the parts of the journey for you, except the books I read, and the books I read play such an important part in my life. But I forget to talk about them. But of late, I'm trying to make my mornings more productive, right? I'm trying to make the morning more productive. I'm a morning guy, you know. I feel I could get more done in the morning. Later in the night, I want to go and sleep early. So I realized I had a habit of running every morning before I get my day started. And uh, I want to tell you surgery and my Achilles and recovery and second surgery and a surgery caused that. I want to tell you all them things. Eh? But the truth is that I just stopped doing it long before I had surgery and all that. Maybe that's how I end up busting my Achilles. But I, I just stopped doing it. I fall back all the way. And I was trying to figure out what it is about the mornings that making it so difficult for me to put on shoes and go and run. That used to be automatic for me. No matter what time I go and sleep, I used to run at least two miles every day. And I haven't done that in a long, long time. Now, I want to sell it old age, right? Because sometimes when I run too much, my back is hot, man, all them kind of thing. And the doctor and them tell me, what they call it thing now? Herniated this, this, it don't run at all because it's problems, but... I say, I say, I want to build back the habit and strengthen myself. Salute to my physiotherapist. Salute to, uh, no physiotherapist. I'll tell you the name at some point in time. I can't remember the name of the business. A progressive or something like that. But um, I plan to go back and do physio, strengthen my core and all them things they say they had to do so I could start back running, right? But I was trying to figure out why it's so difficult for me to get my morning started the way I used to. So I went back to a book that I had read before called Atomic Habits, right? I don't know if I'll read the book before. I just I just started with this book review, right? Because I, I, I promised that I would do it and I, I almost never do it. So um, Atomic Habits is one of those books that really affect my thinking, right? Because I started to realize at some point that it's not really about uh, how much you could get done and your discipline and your stick to itiveness and your willpower. People will tell you that, right? And uh, uh, anybody who accomplished things, will tell you those things. And I always find it to be difficult when people ask me how I got something done. Right? So a good example of that is salute to Star Broadcasting. Um, boy Nigel Nicholson. He reached out to me to, to, to ask me to do a course on podcasting, to teach people a, a, few, a few modules in a broadcasting course. I went broadcasting class by him, right? So anything I say that's in song and right, blame Nigel Nicholson, right? Nigel is the man who I'm talking to. But when I was in Star Broadcasting, it was mainly about radio. He's saying that the shift is there now where the youths and them who are coming into his school more interested in podcasting. So he tell me, boy, I want to do some modules on podcasting. And I kind of hesitate and I be like, Nigel, I don't know why you do it now. <laughs> I try to record it every week. I try to stay consistently out on a Tuesday morning. Uh, I struggle with the video. I don't know how to use this camera, right? <laughs> Audio is... I want to tell you that this is the second time I'm recording this episode because I don't know how to use the equipment, right? But, so I, I always hesitate when people ask things. And I was like, listen, I, this is not where I need to be yet. I, I, I envision where I want to be with this podcast. I'm so far from where we need to be at this point. What can I teach people or what can I tell people? And I always find it difficult. You know, somebody asks you, well, how you manage to do a hundred and something episodes or somebody might say you study and think how you manage to do your degree how you get through with that or lecturing or business or whatever the question might be and my thing is always be well i just do it i just i just do it i where am i tell you it was hard at that times i cry everything i accomplished in this life come with tears i have nothing that didn't come with tears literal physical tears none of it it's, it's difficult it's hard everything hard and my thing to them is, you just have to keep doing it, you know, which is real stupid, lame advice. Because if you're trying to figure out something from somebody who you see doing it. Imagine you meet Brian Larry, you want a bat, right? <laughs> or you meet um, Ryan Telfan, you want to score great goals. You want to be one of the greatest goal scorers of all time. Telfer, score one of the best goals I ever saw. You meet Stone John, you want to be top striker, right? And you ask Stone John, well... How is it you accomplish that and play in England? And, and he said, boy, just, just turn and shoot, you know, trap, take for yourself, turn and shoot, just do it. It's, it's a stupid answer. It does not help very much. But the truth is that there's no, um for me, right, there are no glorious moments of, of, of breakthrough, like what the movies is show where you had this eureka moment on you. Maybe they have, if, if you do something for five years or ten years, like we, I, I remember talking to Daddy the other day, we start business, uh, 2006, was when I started working with him. And 
I don't maybe they have four moments or five moments that we could go back to and say, wow, this was a turning point. Most of the time it's getting up every day when you don't want to get up and go and do the thing and you don't want to do it and you're vexed and it didn't happen and you ain't making no money and clients leaving you. Most of the story is like that. So it's hard to translate to people. But if I could give anybody any advice, which I always hesitate to do, I think at is 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 rooted in habits, right? It's rooted in habit format. And there's two books I'm talking about today, right? Atomic Habits by James Clear and uh, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Charles Duhigg on more pragmatic, right? He's just talking about how habits form and how the brain works and so on. So, for instance, if you know, if you think of now learning to drive, like when I when I do my driving test, I went by the, I get the oldest car on Rice Road to do my driving test with. To the point where when my foot shaking, you remember your foot was shaking when you know don't make it look like me alone. You know? My foot shaking on the clutch, the whole car shaking. Yeah, that thing noisy as hell. I don't know why I went to that old car. And for those of you who are listening, there are thing called manual and there are thing called a clutch and a gear stick. For those of you who, who are around the age group, salute, right? But when 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 you do it enough times, right? You do you you drive enough times because at first when you're driving, it's stressful. It you need all the focus in the world until you reach a point where. You could dr- you could reverse out your driveway almost with your eyes closed. Don't try that, right? But you could reverse out your driveway with your eyes closed. You could drive to places not focused. We on our phone while we're driving. Of course, my thousand years. But things like that, you know, it gets to be automatic. So somewhere along the way, I start again curious about what causes us to. Like sometimes you, you're driving, you ever leave home to head one place, but you just head somewhere else and you realize, oh God, I'm on your route to work, I'm supposed to be going in the grocery. It, it really was fascinating for me to try to understand like what causes that what leads to that and those two books really helped me understand it so i kind of went back to atomic habits to try to figure out what happened on my morning that is keeping my back and um it's a very it's some interesting theories right some interesting theories some of the things you might hear about habits is 21 days right they say do anything for 21 days straight and it becomes a habit most of the theories now or the the, the, the literature disproving that they say there's no fixed amount of days and it's not time driven, it is repetition driven. And Atomic Habits talks a lot about this. It's like if you repeat something over and over, eventually it will start to become automatic. And they, they so they talk about this system of Q, uh, I think it's Q response and reward or something like that. I, I can't remember it offhand. But um, what they're basically saying is that they have some things that trigger something in your mind to do something else. And they, they, Atomic Habits is deeper into it, right? It's more systems. And I'm a second reader this now, so forgive me if I'm not perfect with it. But I recommend it as a good book for anybody to read who wants to, like, trying to accomplish things. Especially if you're talking to people who are telling you uh, it, that is, or you're getting extreme examples of what you have to do. Most of the things, they're not, they're not that extreme. And your self-discipline could only last so long. Your willpower could only last so long. Your motivation could only last so long. <laughs> uh, let, let me give you an example, right? Uh, this year, we're in October. That's 10 months, right? Let me say up to seven months. September is the seventh month. Seven by four is what, 28? So let me say I record about 28 to 30 episodes this year. I could tell you now, I only feel to do one or two. I can remember a couple where I was excited to come and do this and real motivated and hype. Most of the time, I was like, Jesus Christ, I had to come and talk about this again. Like, what to talk about? Is that not? Most of the time, it's been that way. And I've gone past that point. Whatever the 21 days is, the amount of repetitions is. Uh, I think I well past that point because I start to get antsy and uncomfortable when I do record by a certain time in the week and it affects my mood, which, which says that the, the, the coming and doing this here is a habit. What I've learned to is that when I see the topics and I find all of them boring and I don't want to do it, a lot of times when I finish them episodes, somebody somewhere has come and say, boy, that was real good. This was one of your best episodes. And I'd be like, really? So I give up on trying to figure out what it is. The most important thing for me to do it's just show up here every Tuesday. But it has some things I have to put in place, according to Atomic Habits, to make that happen, right? I have to make sure that certain things are done so that I could easily come in here, record in the minimum amount of time I could, because I don't want to spend two, three, four days recording like I used to do in the early. I can't, I can't afford to do that. But I could get on my recording to two hours. I could get on my editing process and thing down to an hour and publish and cut and go and do my work, you know what I mean? Work you getting paid for, you know? So I recommend then. Atomic Habits, and uh, I have started back, but I ain't started run yet. I started to walk every morning, but I could see where it is. You know what was one of my biggest problems I identified from reading the book? 
And when I say reading, too, I use audio books, eh? so I, I, I can't read so well. <laughs> I think that's documented, right? I can't read so well, so I use audio books all the time. So one of the things that was keeping me back in the morning was listening to my favorite morning show, which is JW and Miles. Once I turn that on at 6, half past 6 in the morning, I tend to get stuck listening to that, especially like the drama Wednesday and them kind of thing. I started to listen to that now, and all of a sudden, it's 9 o'clock. When I spin, 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 and TTV home here to do things, and 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 and, and by nine I can't I can't go and run in that hot sun, and I'm I just start my work there and them kind of things. So it keeping my back. What I do now is I I don't put the um I just don't turn on the radio. I just don't the tuning app on my phone. I just don't turn it on. I will go straight when I wake up and um organize myself in the bathroom, weigh myself, do them types of things where fitness concerned, and put on either a book or a podcast that I already have in my earphones. Because if I put it on the speakers in the house, it, it kind of, it gets sticky. Like, I want to stay home and listen. So once I put it in my earpods, and I think I head straight for the front door, get them shoes on, and take a little, now is a walk. I'm working on my fitness to get back up to run in peace. But I just thought I would share that with you all at the beginning of the episode. The other thing I realized from episode listening to all episodes is that as always, end by telling Ollie have a good week and have a productive week. But I don't ever check back in and ask Ollie how Ollie week was. How Ollie week was. Ollie had a good week. Everybody was good. <laughs> Everybody make a little more progress than we. Ollie accomplish your goals. They, they're not some make habits. They talk about the fact that goal setting is not it either. So, good book for you to read. Tell me how you think. And, and if. um, I would love to hear feedback from people as I continue to talk about books. Uh. If you had read the book before and if it had any impact on you or if it's meaningful to you in any way. Or of course, if you if you took the recommendation and you read it, if it um if you find it good or not, you know? That, let, me, let me keep a little book. Let me let me progress now. Let me don't just talk and set a whole talk here in the morning or on a, on, a, on a weekly basis and do check in on one on one another and make sure we're good, right? Uh, my weekend. Why do weekend work? I had a I had a very long week last week. I'm a man is going to bed early. I'm not a, I'm not a late boy. But my father gave me a call last week and he told me that, boy, we have a gig to play. But if you, if you play any gig, you have to rehearse. <laughs> and the rehearsal is 7 o'clock in the night in salt. But I tusty to tell you the truth. I tusty is a long time. We ain't play no kind of music at all. So I was like, you know what? I come in. But boy, who tell me do that? Because the gig was Southern Air's choir is having a tribute or was having a tribute to Joy Caesar, who was the choir master, choir director, musical director for many, many years. And she passed away during COVID, right? Uh, the name of the show was All for Joy. And, <laughs> of course, when you play with the choir, I always I always credit the choir for advancing my music playing, right? Because I, I was a man, again, going back to the book, I was really playing music once a year. I learned music home, I learned music. Uncle Carl, my father, brother, is the one who I really learned music from where he's a... He's a true teacher. He's the definition of a teacher. He's not a, a teacher like during the day, like I hire him to teach children and then he go and do something else when the evening come. He's somebody who once you're around him, you're going to learn something. Anything that he know, he's going to try to get you to know. It's, it's one of the people who I've met in my life who, he always lived like he wouldn't be here f- forever. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to, to see, you know. You, you're wrong people. Once he's wrong youths and stuff, you was passing something on to you. You was passing on some information. <laughs> I, I remember going and praying with him in the early days. <laughs> them days are, are three cordon, man. Once you stray from them three cordon, in some trouble. But I like it and I go in with him to parang. But when you go and call to parang now, he had to tell you, well, let me pass by Tante Yuna. This is with family. So, and they, that's kind of song that your family, they had to have written about Carl. Carl carrying you. So go by this one. And then I, like a fool, now I'm a quarter man. I sit down by these people. He's like, oh gosh, so this is Ken son. Oh Lord. I think it, man, I just want to play my little serial and get out of here. You know? But through him and looking at him play, that's how I get to, 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 to learn music initially. But, Seeing him once a year, as the book suggested, is not enough for me to advance my playing. I don't have enough repetitions. So it's not about how much years you're playing music. It's about how much time you play music during the year. So they, they, they would, people who are in music will, all, will tell you, when you're now learning an instrument, it's better to practice for five minutes a day than to practice for one hour a week. The one hour a week is more time, you know, but it's not enough repetitions. If you do it five minutes a day, all of a sudden it starts to program your brain and uh, Neola and them salute Neola go tell you about neural pathways and how it, ha- how it works and all that, right? 
But that once a year thing wasn't working. So it's only when I started to play on my own and advance and try more and do more repetitions is when I started to learn. But there's a another learning curve that I had to jump on where different types of chords not typical for quattro at all. You don't see people playing it, so it's not something you'll see and learn. But playing with uh, Presentation College, that's Mr. and Mrs. Lee Mack at one point in time. And of course, with the Sudden Airs Choir, help me learn something. Because then they'll play the song on them normal at all. Once them have a song, it's also that arrangement and a change and a change key and a stop here and a dang, dang, dang. I'm telling you exactly what to play here. <laughs> and uh, that force, you know, to come home and practice. Because now, even though I could play, when I go in them rehearsals with them, I back to sweating like when you was driving the car for the first time, become a brain on all that, trying to focus. My fingers can't make them, them chord shape and thing. My hand tired. But I start gradually reaching a point where I learn more, I start to hear differently and then my, 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 my music in place. So when he improved, sorry, when he said, come down for the rehearsal, suddenly he's doing something and it's for joy, I was definitely in that. So I had a few long nights last week, but Sunday gone was the concert. I want to say congratulations to the Sudden Airs Choir. <laughs> I think they put on a great show. It was in St. Benedict's Church down in La Romaine there. Eh? And salute. Uh, there are a few people I had to salute here. You know, before I get into the culture of the week, salute to, of course, um, Peter Lockhart, who is the new musical director and choir director of, of, of the Southern Airs Choir. That is not an easy set of shoes to fill. But um, he did a good job. They put together a great show. And it basically was, again, all for joy. So they tried to do a show that uh, Joy would have put together the type of music that she would have, have played and had, right? And the choir, I don't know how they rehearsed for so much nights <laughs> and then all of them voiced good for the Sunday show. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to accomplish it, but that choir sound am- sounded amazing. So salute to the Sunday Night's Choir. They were accompanied by the UE Arts Steel and the UE Arts Chorale. So the UE Arts Chorale came in with the choir and sing for some of the songs. And you be art steals, an impressive little. Uh, I don't even want to call them like a pan site. <laughs> I just want to stick to the word orchestra with them, right? And not do disrespect to no other pan side or not. But them youths playing on a level that is amazing. I'm not accustomed to seeing a real conductor conducting a pan side, right? I, I, I know you had the band leader in front and a flag woman waving and two people in the banner taking a wine, but I'm not accustomed to see a. a, a, a you know the conductor, what is the stick they use? The stick, the pointer. I mean, you know what it's called, but they conduct it. And sometimes a, a, a lame musician like me is look like the conductor ain't doing nothing. I mean, if a song went da, 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 and you doing that all the time, I feel like I could do that. But you see them pointing out specific parts of the orchestra and them then playing, going low. Listen, it was amazing to see they played really, really well. So salute to them. Key on the uh, key on the last is the was the conductor of the band. And it was it was impressive. Uh, Lock, Peter Lockhart uh, was the conductor of the choir, and then they have another fellow who <laughs> is one of the most impressive things I ever see. A fellow named Jessel Murray. Jessel Murray is a trained and qualified musician many many years. He's held several positions in the university and so on. But he was the conductor for some of the pieces, and he is a spectacle. He is something to see when he conducted. I didn't know the conductor could be part of the entertainment. I thought conductor used to do their thing and then turn wrong and bow and then point at the singer or the choir. And then, but he is entertaining. He, he must lose some weight when he's doing that because he playing his, I mean, his piano playing is amazing. But when he in front of us and conducting that choir, it is energy. So the first thing that happened at the show was that the president was supposed to come. Or she was there, uh, Christine Kangaloo, greatest president in the history of presidenthood. And... Uh, but before she came in, they had to play a fanfare. You know where it's go? And then as soon as she got to her seat, they started the national anthem. And the, 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 it was conducted by Jessel Murray. <laughs> no, he conducted the choir with his left hand. And the pan side, the UE Orchestra, the UE Art Steel Orchestra, <laughs> with the stick with the right hand. And listen, it, but at that point, you know you're going to get a great show. <laughs> Because it was action and the drama the men build into the national anthem. I started to feel proud to be a trainee again. I said, what? I want to say, I said, I'm straight. I said, well, what is this? They, listen, it was amazing to hear. And that's the acoustics in that church and everything is, is something else. And uh, that, was, that was the start of what was a, a great night, a great show. Several different types of pieces from classical to jazz kind of music. I mean, Joy was very... Um, 
like like uh versatile choice of music was what you were so busy were looking for so they, they they did well to represent her and again congratulations to to to, to Peter Lockhart and them. Now we asking yourself, what the hell are you doing there? Because me and no no classical music and them thing. Well, it came to our part of the show, which I wanna tell you this is the difficult thing in music, right? Song check is one o'clock. So I had to go down south for one o'clock to song check. <laughs> Show starts at 5 o'clock. What I had to do in these four was in between. Me and no, just hang around. We playing second to last. <laughs> so you're either till 8 o'clock in the night from a 1 o'clock song. Check it yeah, a musician, I respect a musician. But uh, when it came to our part of the show, the second to last performance, we uh, it was announced that the president had requested these two songs from the Southern Air Choir. So I really take that to, to mean that the president had personally requested me to come and play a little quattro. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, she asked for me direct. She said, I'm coming to the Southern Air Show under the condition that you'll get a great Corey Shepard to come and play two tunes for me, right? And this is why she's the greatest president of all time. The song that she requested, well, the first one that we play, and again, salute to our, our band now. This is myself, my father, Nolly Me Too. A Gary Ison, the great Gary on the drums, Atiba, Atiba Williams on pan, and Bernadette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to say Bernadette is Nicholas, eh? but I'm sure I have that wrong. Let me go and watch my notes eh, before I call people name wrong. Bernadette Roberts playing piano. Bernadette uh, is who we would have played with all the years playing with Joy. Every arrangement that Joy did for us, uh, or for the choir, that we had to accompany them. Uh, Bernadette was the one playing the piano. So Bernadette was there to play with us and... This it was her arrangement, and this was the first song. I remember when you children were weak and hungry. I took you to my bosom, fed you my oil And even when you took and wasted and left me drained There was always love for you in my soil Even when my older children, they tried to shame me Setting no rules for the younger ones Bringing such grief and sadness into my household in the end, they're still my daughters and sons I will always be there for you No matter what you do, whatever joy or pain that you are going through I will always be there for you I will be Blessed mother Mama Trini God must love you They'd say Hello high water I would just rise And embrace you Protecting my children In every way Even when you fight And argue about different fathers Remember The middle passage Brought them straight to my door Mama never worry about no race, I just love them And so my blood is spoiled when you start to war I will always be there for you No matter what you do, whatever joy or pain that you are going through I will always be there for you I will be
joy All you got to do is start looking out for each other I mean Man and woman check for the girls and boys To those of you who sow your seeds and then run like crazy I want to see you turn and commit your heart And those of you who choose to lead all the rest to your duty Foolishness will only tear us apart And I will always be there for you No matter what you do, whatever joy or pain that you are going through I will always be there for you I will be That was the first song that they play, and of course you remember that from the inauguration, right? I can't talk about that here where Kenny come and play, but in my mind they request me directly. I just want to tell you too that when I watch the program, I saw something here. Did you know that that song and the music behind that song was written by the great David Michael Rudder? I did not know that till I saw the program for this. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. That when I spoke about this in the, after the president's inauguration, I'm pretty sure that I said this song was done by Natasha Wilson too. So again, I want to correct that now if I did make that mistake. That is the voice of Melanie Hudson. Sweet as it gets. Now, again, I tell you, some of the most distinct and the sweetest voices in Kaiso is what we come to talk about here today. You know? But I want to say a salute to two singers on that show, Turan Nicholas and Michelle Dorich. No. <laughs> but tell us something. Two of them do two songs a piece back to back, like in out, in out, right? So like there was like a song clash, but it wasn't that, right? But the, the their voices is hard to describe. Yeah, I wish I had Tifa recording it and come to play for you. But Turan and Michelle are amazing singers, and to hear how them ladies full up a church, they did solo pieces, right? This is outside of the choir. I want to tell you that as well that even though they had a segment of the show where they did solos and uh, amazing solos. I want to tell you that they also just join back the choir and sing everything else that the choir sing, which is amazing to me. Singer, sing. <laughs> I, 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 I don't talk about some people in this episode who are not singing at all, but these two ladies came and they sing. And the second song that they, they, they played, which again, going back to one of the most distinct and sweetest voices in, uh, in Calypso. <laughs> and to me as well, I know, I know you're waiting to hear it, right? To me as well, one of the greatest calypsos ever written. <laughs> it's, a, it's very difficult to find. You'd be hard-pressed to find any song that is as well arranged, well put together, <laughs> and well sung as this. Requested by the president herself. Now the election back and I'll die away. In short, this is what I have to say. Let us forget spites and grudges and concentrate. Come, let us sit and try to relate. Because now, more than ever, we must show Discipline, tolerance, and production I have to go now To build a strong and better nation I say, that is the main foundation So, come let us work hand in hand Because this is our land Come my brother, come my sister Success is working hard For 
For our country we must have regard Forget all your differences, let we start to build And on one to progress we surely will Because now more than ever we must show Discipline, tolerance and production To build a strong and better nation I say that is the main foundation So come let us work hand in hand Because this is our land Come my brother, come my sister And let us build a nation together Who played in this guitar? That had to be Kenny Phillips. Only Kenny's tight soil. So much of things that we need to see about. Surely I do have to spell them out Cause you know as well as I do the only way Is putting more effort and less play Because now more than ever we must show Discipline, tolerance and production To build a strong and better nation I say that is the main foundation So come let us go hand in hand Because this is our land Come my brother, come my sister And let us build a nation together This also goes for every Trinbagonian Who going to live in a foreign land Now is the time to come home and do something Instead of staying out there and freezing Because now more than ever we must show Discipline, tolerance and production to build a strong and better nation I say that is the main foundation So come let us go hand in hand Because this is our land Come my brother, come my sister And let us build a nation together I want to know who played that guitar and bass and who arranged that song. <laughs> Somebody, uh, 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 with them kind of chops, that'll be like Kenny Phillips. I want to make a better running bed that is Kenny Phillips. Uh, Kenny Phillips episode, just because you don't think Kenny Phillips is getting respect he deserves. But that song's so well arranged and so well put together. It's, 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 it's something else. Some of the things that the brass line would typically play on any other song you hear in the guitar is play. It's, it's bit bad. But that was the second song requested by the great. Christine Kangaroo, the greatest president we've had in the history of Trinidad and Tobago, requesting me to come there and play a little quattro and pretend to be Kenny and them in that moment. And fl- Ke- both Kenny Phillips and Kenny Corby, <laughs> pretending to be both of them in the moment. I'd play my little bad chord and take. But again, a salute to, to, to Peter Lockhart and everybody who organized this show. It was a great show overall. It's a pleasure playing with these guys any on any given day. And playing with the Southern Air Squire is something else. I think it's for what's in the eye when you hear them voices behind you. So that was my weekend in a nutshell. That was not a nutshell. <laughs> that was that was absolutely not a nutshell. But other things I saw over the weekend, 
was a clip start floating around with the great Marshall Montano. Again, one of the greatest and most distinct voices in the history of Calypso and Soca music. Who we will highlight here, right? <laughs> Who we will highlight here. One of the greatest voices. Or well, I want to say the pinnacle of Soca. Greatest to ever do it. Uh, who you want to argue has accomplished from Marshall, accomplished, have the catalog, the size of Marshall. Marshall is, Marshall is probably the greatest to ever do it, right? Greatest ever. What you call greatest of all time? Definitely there's no conversation around soca music or calypso music that excludes Marshall as the top guy. Top guy, man in charge. He was seen performing... In a velvet suit, you had to guess, you salute that too. If you could put on a velvet suit, you don't win by me already. If you could, if you could pull that off, you've done a king in my books. But uh, it seemed as though he was invited to, anybody know the nice during the, the quarantine would have club quarantine. There were a few people, two girls through that quarantine period. No major hype was one for me, definitely. Both with the comedy thing, DJing every night, the clash thing they had put on between him and Nori. Uh... Uh, DJ Cassidy was one who bring back a vibe with, 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 with sort of what looked like live entertainment with plenty of entertainers and singers that we haven't seen in a long time when homie and Stacey's always play. Any, anytime we entertain them, people had to hear Cassidy, all the mixes and everyone with dancehall and we waiting for the soca one, DJ Cassidy, but the, you, have, you have a couple with dancehall on it and that kind of thing. And uh, he, the, the nice is another one of them who used to do very long Instagram lives just club quarantine DJing as if you're in a club you remember them days when you couldn't leave your house and think the government say stay home if you ain't vaccinated you can't come out you can't go in your grocery or share vaccine card and thing the nice I'm, I, I want to say the nice is already a star by this time right but I wouldn't know who the nice was if it wasn't for club quarantine and I'm sure he got more like a different level of fame and international acclaim when he did club quarantine so I read in from Rock the Bells website here and it says, D-Nice brings Club Quarantine live to the Kennedy Center for a three-day residency. DJ recording artist, artist, photographer, and Kennedy Center Hip-Hop Culture Council member, D-Nice is bringing his acclaimed Club Quarantine live to Washington, D.C.'s Kennedy Center for a three-day residency from October 6th to 9th. D-Nice, who became the first hip-hop artist to, to headline and sell out the Kennedy Center Opera House in 2022, returns with Club Quarantine live. Club Quarantine safely brought... Millions together during the pandemic and will come offline again as as an expanded three-day celebration of music, life, love, laughter, and community with the Club Quarantine Live Residency. The lineup, he's quoted as saying, the lineup we've prepared is nothing short of breathtaking. The opportunity has left me overflowing with emotions. I can hardly contain my excitement for Club Quarantine Live Residency at the Kennedy Center and the phenomenal community of artists that will be participating as part of it. D-Nice explained in a press release is a special curation encompassing the incredible sounds of hip-hop, R&B, gospel, soca, jazz, and comedy. We invite the audiences of our CQ fam, I guess that's Club Quarantine, CQ fam to join us and get ready for unforgettable, unforgettable experience that will touch your soul and make you dance with joy. Together, Hey, I forget to tell all this, Sharon Pitt was the host of the... Um... <laughs> I need this organized a hell of a ticket. Sharon Pitt was the host of the thing as I, as I talk about voices. One of the greatest voices in the history of Trinidad and Tobago is Sharon Pitt, right? Sorry, I was supposed to say that during the last segment. But continuing to read from the nights together, we'll continue to create magical moments that will last a lifetime. I'm looking for the most important part, important part of this article. Right, I'm skipping some paragraphs here. For the creative black tie affair on October 7th, guest artists will include Grammy-nominated hip-hop icon MC Light, R&B singer and writer Kem. Who's Kem? R&B vocalist Mo- Mooney Long. Clearly, clearly, I don't listen to enough of me. I don't know who's Kem, me and the Mooney Long. But I do know the Trinidadian king of soca and multi-award winning artist, producer, and songwriter, Marshall Montano. The list finished. <laughs> the list is over. Nobody else was in there. Me concerned about the Lux and Sherry Shepard and uh, Abby, Abby Shola and Gina Yashi and Zainab Zarn- Jacob Johnson. Me and one of these people, the man of the hour, is a great Marshall Montana. And as far as I'm concerned, he steal the show, and he would have always steal the show. Because he's a show stealer, and he cannot be stopped on any stage, anywhere, internationally, locally. All in space, out of space, Marshall going and continue to be one of the greatest of all time. So the, fl- the clip start floating around. For those of you who didn't see it, go and Google it, right? I can't, I can't put that whole clip in. I will play Peace Fair, though. And it, it showed Marshall performing with, a, with that with an orchestra 
it seemed to be an orchestra and his band. Or, or orchestra and a band. If that make any sense. That make any sense? The, when I say orchestra, I mean um like violin and cello and trumpet and saxophone. Like you know how orchestras look like, right? But it also had a, a band there that looked like a soca band with bass and guitar and drum and them kind of thing. And D nice in the middle DJing and Marshall singing. A conductor who have vibes just like Jessel Murray, but he had a next level. I see two conductors any price of one we can because that man, the conductor is whining, violinist whining, p- k- keyboard man. Everybody is having a fet at the expense of the great Marshall Montano. <laughs> I think, you know, the choir and them, I was at those rehearsals for the Southern Airs Choir and hearing the way they're telling them, smile, make sure you make contact with the audience. Don't just sway into one another. Make sure you go with the vibe of the song, stay together, one unit. And so, so, so well drilled. <laughs> and it was surprising to see the, 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 the whole choir in this case broke completely loose. The choir broke loose, all the way loose. And, and was having was having a great a great time i want to, i want to read from marshall instagram page right before i play a piece of what he um a piece of what he of of the performance itself uh the the, the name of the the conductor is igma thomas i hope I, I hope i pronounced it right you can find him as iggy soul on instagram <laughs> igma thomas we like you Come for carnival, you know, Trini, as you do something we like. Come for carnival, D nice, Ole, come for carnival. We want Ole on Ole own truck and we want our orchestra on the road to play songs because, again, sticking with the theme of the greatest voices, when you get proper music behind them and the big band music, it could be an amazing thing to see and to hear. But I want to play a little slice of it for you, for those of you who might not see in the clip, right? Yo, Marshall, song it. <laughs> see this right but right now Igma Thomas is in a full wine <laughs> he's off he conduct any choir the orchestra still up, but he's he in full wine and mood in true martial style the whole crowd is on their feet recording i mean back in the days there was a jump and wave but now they're on their feet recording right <laughs> but um let me see if we can find peace of the next one Now, one of the things I want to tell you, right, about the greatest voices in Calypso, right, is Marshall easily have one of the most, one of the greatest, most distinct, most recognizable voices in Calypso. But I have a bone to pick on Marshall. For the last, for the last twenty years, I don't think we hear Marshall voice. Huh? <laughs> and this orchestra is one. I'm watching this performance, good, right? And having come off the weekend and listening to Southern Air's choir and the UE Art Steel Choral and uh, the UE UE Art Steel and UE Arts Choral and, uh, and hearing what orchestra songs like and watching Jessel Murray and Peter Lockhart and them conduct a band and hear what a band supposed to song like. I'm having some doubts as to what's going on in the Kennedy side. I know it's a proud moment. All of we proud. All of we love Marshall and everything. 
Uh, any great words of the Desmond Valentine Ninja Man? Something not right. Something not right. <laughs> <laughs> because if you listen to that clip, and I want you to go and find the clip yourself, right? You listen to that clip and tell me what the orchestra is playing. The orchestra, I see in violin, I see in saxophone, I see in trumpet, I see in all different. I'm not hearing any of them instruments play anything, to be honest with you. I, I, maybe it's just me. What I hear in playing in background there is the record. That is the recording playing behind it. I don't know how tight, and again, I, remember I'm a jokey musician, eh? so I don't know what it takes to go on a stage and replicate exactly what a record play, ping for ping, you know what I mean? <laughs> second by second. The guitarist and player off stroke, he needs to hear Kenny Phillips, and he needs to ching, 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 he needs to hear nothing. He just play exactly what, but again, I'm a professional musician, so me, you know. And then a band on one side, an orchestra on the next side, and DJ D nice in the middle. It looked to me like DJ D nice press play. Is a heavy Ableton track is where you're hearing there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. But I am not hearing that, that orchestra play much. Well, I could tell you that when you watch it, you see in there ain't playing much. The violinist on them getting in with a little color. You see in a little color, right? Where every now and again, when Iggy point them out, when you name Ignatius, when the conductor point them out, you see them do a little thing. But I don't know. The track definitely coming from Ableton. If that is not the case... Marshall is not performing. Marshall is not singing no more. So maybe the goal here is to preserve one of the greatest voices in Soka forever and ever. Amen. Because Marshall is not singing. He has not sung for the last 20 years or that. Talking about the last time we did see all the fets where Marshall used to sing all his songs, them, them fets expire. The island people fets on them. They don't have none of them fets again. What you hear in there is Marshall's voice singing the entire track in the background. Now, any performer will have what you call a TV track, right? Where they, there's a version of the track that plays behind them. And what it typically does, it might fill in spaces, like where the artist might lose their breath, or where they might have struggle hitting high notes, or whatever it is, or just an effect that they want to hear. So they might use their own voice as background, right? <laughs> but I want to tell you that Marshall is effectively a backup singer at this point. He's singing very few lines in his own song. So he's a, he's a cross between a backup singer and a hype man. Because what he's doing is singing a little bit of the ending lines or the beginning lines of a song filling in. So he backing up his track rather than his track backing him up. And then every every now and again, because he's the greatest ad-lib man of all time, right? Every now and again he say, hey, 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 hey like, like flavor, flavor. <laughs> Put your hands up in the middle of your mind right now, baby. He's a hype man and a backup singer for him. So it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Now, again... This is the pinnacle. This is our, our, let me read. Let me read what Marshall says because I want to be fair to people here. Right? As a man, don't come here to bash nobody. I don't come here to critique nobody. I just come here to say my own feelings and why I see things as. I saw him post, as a performer, life on the road can be tough at times, but there certainly are great rewards along the way. Here I am getting off stage in Miami. No sleep, no voice, flying to Washington, D.C. and hitting the streets to find a suit. Marshall, you buy the suit the day? Well... Now he's the greatest of all time. This man find a velvet suit to buy on the streets. So what the hell is going on? Where he find this suit? This suit was one of the best looking suits I ever see. But anyway, walking into that venue to hear a full big band with orchestra playing soca is a feeling that words can't really describe, but it's definitely a feeling of accomplishment. I would have liked that feeling, so I'd like to hear them play. I'm, great, I'm really grateful to D-Nice for including soca in such a monumental moment and for being someone who knows the power of our music and why it deserves to be seen and heard. And to the band Igmar Thomas and the Revive Gig Band, the Revive Big Band, sorry, uh, the conductor Igmar Thomas, and all the dope musicians, thank you for loving the vibes and putting your hearts and souls into it. We had a blast. Stay tuned. I'm going to share some of the awesome vibes next. Salute to them. What is the name of the man named Igmar? Igmar Thomas and the Revive Big Band. They've been sung great because... <laughs> If they could replicate a record, like we need to get them on the road here for Carnival. We need to come and let them play for Soka Monarch. We could afford them. You could get them to come and play. Uh, th this might be it for 18 minutes. If this is how a band could play, Marshall, you had to pay this band to come down with you. When you're doing, um, what if that name now? It's not um, Marshall Mondays again. What, what is the name of the, what is the name of the thing? One Fet? Whatever the name of it is. He needs to get this side here. Igma. Igma, if all is so tight with Soka, all you need to come through. I see some of the greatest. So musicians we have, right? Some of the greatest. There are some musicians here. <laughs> Again, I'm talking about 
Kenny Phillips and talking about uh, Fitzroy Coleman. We have some of the greatest guitarists, some of the greatest musicians you've ever seen. Roy Cape and the All Stars and them, right? <laughs> But I've never heard anybody replicate a record like the dot for dot, you know what I mean? Note for note like that. I mean, yeah. But I want to I want to draw an example. The pinnacle of music for us is Marshall. Uh call Beyonce the pinnacle of whatever kind of music she's singing. She is on tour. It looked like about a thousand city. I tell you, I was in Miami the other day. Four hundred US dollars a ticket and you can't see they make it very clear that um this is a listening ticket only. You could hear. And you could tell people you was there. They could take picture like you was on a Beyonce show, but you're not going to be able to see. So you want to spend that 400G or not? <laughs> so she had to be the pinnacle of what she's doing, right? She is going out there every night, sometimes back-to-back nights to do shows, traveling between cities and singing her song. I'm not saying she don't have a backing track or a vocal track backing her, but she is singing, singing, right? <laughs> And dancing and sweat. She must lose weight when she on tour. Because to do that dance routine every night alone is a scene. But how you get any breath control and all that to do that, I don't know. But she is singing. And then within the midst of all them high energy performances, telling all them women and them about how to lead a man and thing. In the midst of that, she come and she sings some ballad type songs where you have to sing, sing in real life. Where people come to pay good money to hear you sing. That's the pinnacle. That's the most expensive ticket in the, in, the, in, the, in the musical world and so on. And Marshall is the equivalent here. The most expensive ticket it have is to go and see Marshall. Any fet where Marshall in its sellout, and the ticket is the most expensive for Carnival. And 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 you're singing nothing. <laughs> so I can understand you say you lost your voice and because you perform for Miami Carnival and then you're heading here to do this. I understand that, but to be fair. That backing track has been playing for years, years. Marshall not singing. I, I don't like it. No, honestly, I don't like it. I, I don't like that the greatest we have to offer. Is that, what you're doing this is, is like the bare minimum. It's like, you know, you, you give us a show. So you come and you, you do a little backup and you do a little hype, man. And I understand that soccer artists might be at a disadvantage where this concern and they have to do things like this to preserve their voice because of what carnival season is. When you're performing two, three times every weekend, and some is big fat, some is little birthday party, some is all inclusive, some is big thing in PSA, and it's had dust on. When you're doing that, and then the last week of carnival, you're gonna make more money than you make for the whole year because you're in two fat every night for that. And then you're the flowers and do it again on the next carnival. I could understand the need to preserve your voice for that reason because you can have a big road match song at one year in our carnival. You could have a big road match song, and then you have no voice the week of carnival, and you lost your road match, you lost your, your performances, you lost your deposits because you can't show up and perform, or your song in terrible, which is bad for your brand, especially Marshall brand being a big global brand. But the reality is that blacks would never, great RIP to the great blacks, Destro would never, I, I don't know any other, so all you can point out one for me, I don't know any other soca artist. <laughs> who playing a full vocal backing track. In other words, they playing the whole song behind them, and they just come in for color commentary like them at Darren Gango or Ian Bishop. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand. That is the greatest we have. That I, I, I feel like if we had, a, we had a demand more. Again, if you're performing everywhere, but for the last, could be 10 years, Marshall performing, picking and choosing where he performing in the carnival. So there was one carnival, I remember the first one where he put out things with 10 performances, which is unheard of for Soka artists. It's like only 10 shows. We're expecting to see you everywhere, every weekend. And then come to last year, carnival or year before, whenever it was, where the only show you perform was yours. One, punto final, no more. Carnival Friday night, your show dies it. I think you went one show, you went to St. Mary's Fed, that was last year, you went to St. Mary's Fed, you lift up Destra. So you telling me that you have one performance. So from Miami to DC, and you had to go and find the baddest suit we ever see. I can understand how you lost your voice. But when you have one performance for the whole carnival, you lost your voice there too? Should we be worried about Marshall? Is something happening that we don't know? Because as a performer and a singer, your voice is going to be stronger than most. I have plenty of voices to play in this episode. And you find that, I remember going and playing a thing for Sparrow with... um. The song we were going to play for him was Education in that Primo Bowl. Again, arranged with by Peter Lockhart again. And he said that we had to come and rehearse with him if he had to play with us. So when we went up there, we were waiting for a while. There's an, um, an Elise Reino Rama, yes, Sparrow's Hideaway. So it's the same side, you know, me, my father, Nolly, Deron was there, a pan man, a different pan man than who was in, in with the Southern Airs Choir. And while we sing down the waiting, we have the instruments in we hand, so we start to play. 
You know this song? Say, Rose, girl, I want you bad. Girl, I want you bad. I go in staring mad, oh Lord. You know this song? So we playing that and we just vibe into this song on the inside. And when we, 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 we while we playing that, and I singing in my love key, and you know what I mean? We, we just vibing. We just having a good time. Down the corridor of our house, I hear, whoa, 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 And listen, it stunned everybody. Everybody head turned. It's like, what the hell was that? When we got, we was there a long time waiting for Sparrow, but it was Sparrow coming out, and he, at, the, at that point of the song, it have a part of the song, so, ba, 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 why? Why do you leave me? Why you deceive me? Rose, you're looking for blows. And that, that man hit a low note coming out of that curl, though. It stunned everybody. And when every, all the heads turned, what I saw was Sparrow walking with a nurse. Like, the nurse had to help him walk coming through the curl, though. I'm saying all that to say that his body, you could see his body is not what it was. We've seen that with Sparrow for a while now. But when that voice ring through that corridor, it's like a lion roar when he bellowed it. Everything stopped when that voice come. And you re- listen, immediately, you do, I want to stop singing. You want to stop because like, you realize what you was calling singing for your whole life is garbage when you hear that voice come through that corridor, booming like that. So even as you get older and you get, you get let me say, you, you, you're losing your thing, you get feeble, whatever it might be, you find that an artist could hold that voice and their voice is what, because your voice is your career. So it's making me wonder now, like, should we be worried about Marshall? Is there something happening that we don't know? Like, if, if your voice gone for every performance you have and you're not singing in any performance you have, is, is, this, is this something for alarm? What, what's happening? What happened in the studio when you go? Like, like, it takes so much effort out of you in the studio that your voice gone. Again, I want you to remember that Marshall is not the only person who have high energy performances, who, who, who songs is called for real singing, who this do shouting. A lot, of, a lot of artists do this. What Marshall doing in and of itself is not unique to the, to the, to the genre. And I want to tell you as well that this was not always the case. Because before the days of Ableton and thing, Marshall's one of the greatest performers. In, oh, matter of fact, you want to play a little Marshall performance for you? Let me, let me play this just so you understand where you're coming from. Right? This is a performance from Marshall Montano. And you will hear the difference when he's singing. And the end. this is why the energy is what it was or what it is when Marshall come on stage. Because he do this for about 20-something years, 30 years before he stopped singing. Take this scene for me. Sing the next performers on stage out of TNT. A young, vibrant, and exciting man. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Ecstatic. You hear one of the most distinct voices talking there? Eh? Marshall Montano. Hey. Over. Put your hand in the air. Raise your hand in the air. Raise your hand from left to right. Come on. Raise your hand from left to right. Are you ready to get on board? Say yeah. I want to see some others come in the front. Don't they come in the front? Come in the front. One, two, one, two, three, two. Let me hear you scream. Get ready. One. You ready to go down? You ready to go down? One, two. One, two, three, put on low. Mama ding ding, 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 put on low. Mama By all means, this is time to dance. I say wine is a good, I lose control. Bacchanal, what you say? Bacchanal, a wheel and tumble get all bad in the air. Everybody raise your hand in the air, let's party. Wine, wine. Raise your hand in the air, let's party. Wine. Say bed down and wine, wine, wine. 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 Say back and wine, wine, wine. Raise your hand in the air, let's party. Wine. Raise your hand. Just see the section yet? What are you going on? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. It 
it's a no backing track there, you know. It's heavy music and 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 and, and background vocalists. No. Mama ding ding. Go down low. Mama ding ding. Go down low. Mama ding ding. Go down low. Why not touch your toe? Touch your toe. I think I see Simo in front of Hold on! Take off your flag if you have it! Brothers, put your flag in the air! Raise the flag in the air! Question! Take it right up, take it up, take it up. I want to say Happy Mother's Day. And I want to wish my mother Happy Mother's Day also. Yes. Right? Mothers only don't go nowhere. What I wanted to do is recreate Trinidad Carnival. When you're coming down the road Carnival Tuesday and they hear brass, you just take out your flag and do so. You just do so. Brass! Brass! I want to see everybody hand going just so. Right. So this way he's talking and thing is how he's talking now, right? But the difference is when he done talk, he goes sing. So good. And I'll start to get on. Bad, 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 bad. Right? Are you ready? One, brass. You ready? Two. Take out your flag. One, two. One, two. Raise the flag. Brass. Brass. Whole fat mash up, you know. Hey, somebody scream! Hey, I feel like I could go off it. White part to the left, white part to the right, white part to the left. Make a circle, circle, white, white. Alright, going on too long. I, I might end up listening to this for the whole time, you know, because <laughs> easily, easily one of the greatest to do it right back about four or five decades worth of that thing easy to do. But I, I, I'm concerned, I'm very, very concerned. And all the old talk, I'm concerned because you're seeing this and hearing this over and over with Marshall voice, voice always gone. And he uses it, it makes me wonder if you use the pinnacle and you're passing over a torch, right? Where are you leaving for voice on them fellas and the Aaron Duncans and whoever you're passing it to, the torch to? If you just done sing, you done sing. So is either something wrong that we don't know about or we had to fix this? We had to fix this. You had to, you had to come and give you a full length performance where you're actually singing your songs. You're actually singing your song because as some, as some, as some artists here to play. In terms of voice and the recognition of their voice and the distinctiveness of their voice, who plenty older than Marshall and when you hear their voice, you can't mistake it. You know? I ain't gonna tell you who sing this. And you can tell me if the voice sound familiar. And I know you never hear the song night. But again, one of the most distinctive voices in Calypso. And she's singing 
a hundred years now, at least a hundred years worth of hits and find back hits in the oldest but the phase of her life. I want to not be disrespectful, but the oldest part of her life, she finding back big hits with her same voice. If I play back a song for you from in the seventies, <laughs> and her voice booming coming through. So again, salute to Marshall, salute to Dina, salute to everybody in the Kennedy Center. But we want to know whether to be worried or whether to demand a full-length performance where you're actually singing your song and then because you're commanding a lot of respect, you're commanding a lot of money, your shows take it hard to get. We, we expect in better where this is concerned, unless something is wrong, of course. Talk about things wrong, wrong, right? I saw a post on Instagram from the great Orlando Octave, another one of the most distinct voices in soca in history. I saw a post from him that was... Um, uh, a little eye-opening, right? Maybe I shouldn't be surprised by this at all. But he posted, if you know Orlando Octave, Orlando Octave had plenty songs in soca and dancehall in, in several different areas. He was doing reggae. At a point in time, you all seen him uh, showing up in Jamaica with Sizzler and them a lot. You know, I was hoping that his career would have been, would have taken off in reggae because you could see he have a reggae kind of vibe to him that could work alongside artists like Sizzler and there. And he always, always had a consciousness to his music. He had some hits over the years, but somehow was never respected as one of the top tier artists, you know? It was always Lando, you know I mean? Everybody used to be kind of little brother Lando, all the DJs, all the artists and things, you know? They, 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 you know, they kind of son in here like that. Yeah, them a little fella, they Lando. But uh, he has changed and gone into uh, walking the religious part of finding himself in religion. I want to say it's something to do with... Um, Black Israelites. Let me not say that. Because I, go, I know I have it wrong, you know, but he's joined he's part of a religious movement. I hope I'm saying that in the right way. But I saw him post and basically uh, tagging Sonny Bling and asking if it's real talk, right? So it's a post from, he pulled it from another website, another Instagram page, and he posted Sonny Bling starts a blast radio stations for promoting gun music on radio. He took a call and that one caller agreed fully with him. Right after he hung up the radio and silent for a second, he proceeded to say, or let the manager tell me to change the topic. Let that sink in. Now, I've I've spoken about gun lyrics and thing in music for a long time, right? I I um I am not necessarily opposed. I, I don't like putting restrictions on artists and telling artists what to sing. I think an artist's job is to go out there and reflect what is actually out there. An artist should be like a mirror for the society or, or, or a way of telling these stories or documenting what was happening in society at this point in time. A part of the reason I could do what I did is because hundreds, if not thousands of artists were able to paint a picture and I could talk about times long before I was here or before I could have functioned to know what happened in culture and music or any country or any world, right? The, the artists do this, right? They, they encapsulate a time. And I think we would be missing out as humanity if we go down this road of taking a moral decision to say that because morally I am against something, an artist must not paint that picture. It would be equivalent to say that you cannot make movies about different things or you cannot paint a picture about war, World War II because... I against war. I, I I don't know that it equates, and uh, I think that it, it, it unfairly happens in music more than any other form of entertainment or art. I, I've never heard somebody say, "Well, you shouldn't make a, you shouldn't make a violent movie." We seem to be able to accept that actors acting and there's a script that they wrote out, even when the movie's a, a true story. We just accept it. You know, it happens, or somebody documenting it. But when musicians document it. We start to hear terms like glorified, you know, they're glorifying gun and they're making it glamorous for people to have guns and so on. I, I just don't know if that is true. I don't know if the music now is any more violent than the music we listened to back in the day. I hear people talk about that all the time, but it's just simply not true. I think what happens is, is two things happening at the same time. As you get older and you start to make turn and things, your ears just get more sensitive. So, like, going back to um, <laughs> going back to last week and listening to Young Brother and things, right? You have to understand this. I like young brother. I'm glad to see. You see, anytime you find a way to better your life and better your family life, I always in support of that. You know, black people start off behind. Yes, me, I care what nobody say. If the, 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 the behind where black people start off, if you find a way out of ghetto and find a way out of poverty and find a way to secure generations to come, all power to you. I'm glad for you. I don't have to agree with the way you find to do that. And to, to just, I'll be brutally honest, right? I don't even have to. Uh, it don't even have to be legal 
<laughs> I was trying to find a good way to put that. I don't care if it's legal or it's illegal because a lot of the people who have been able to secure generational wealth in this world will never worry about money. Anybody with their last name will never worry about money. The ways they get was illegal and immoral and grossly violent and hugely exploitative and they rob and steal and kill and pillage and plunder. So I, if a black man find a way, I glad for him. I die, that is me. Now, again, I would hope don't kill nobody and don't distress no communities and so on. I'm not saying that in isolation, but I's like, you find a way, you sell a brick, you get through, right? <laughs> don't quote man that, right? I'm going to delete that part. But if you come like a young brother, when you hear a young brother's story and him talking about him going parties with Hottie and he only had one set of clothes and them kind of thing, how oh, you could not be glad for a youth like that who come out of it? Now, while I glad for him, I can't sing the music he's sing, right? Because... As much as I like it something, I like it in a context. I wouldn't like to hear Zachary singing that. Push back, push back, baby. Prince, I don't want that baby. I find that a little crude, that a little rough. It's a little rough on my ears. But that had more to do with me getting older than him singing anything that was any more crude. Because I remember how my mother and them react. I remember a Patra video coming on. On 17 Anderson Street in St. Jimmy. I had one TV in the house. And that Patra video come on, and my mother and them and Uncle Neville and them, that was queen of the pack. Anybody remember? <laughs> they was like, where is this? You want more iron? And she had, I want you to go back and watch that Patra video now. That is soft compared to what we're watching now. It's a big difference. But the reality is just that our ears and our eyes and our senses, we just get more sensitive we, or, or sensible <laughs> as you get older. So we can take certain things. But it is the job of the youth to push the envelope. I was talking to Luther Miguel Swazet the other day. was talking about this where Swazet had a good point in that soca music is happy music. And for the brand of soca music, we should continue down that path so that we don't deteriorate or dilute our brand. I, I agree with that 100%. If we had an organized approach to branding music and so on. And, and, and her, in fairness to her, she was not saying don't let youth sing violence. She was just saying call it something else. So I think what she was talking about is a strictly marketing standpoint, like um, like how, how the music is represented. And uh, my point is let them sing the violence so can it will fail. So I think this brand of soca music being happy music is too strong for any one youth or movement so used to change it. But the point I'm making is this. Our, our ears get more sensitive, one, and then it is the job of the youths to rebel and push the envelope. It is an important part of human evolution. If we do do that, we, we, will, we will be stuck as a species, right? So we could get into that in the next episode. So when they sing in violence and think, I don't really... Uh, I wouldn't stop them. I would listen to what they're saying and see if we could change the country to be a, a society where people don't feel to sing that kind of music. That that may more be our job. Although they have a responsibility to do that as well. But we here for longer and we have some more things figured out. So we had, to, we had to figure out how we could make this a society where people not feeling to partake in crime or paint pictures about crime as being the, the, the thing that we glorify. But I could tell you that a lot of youths like me who wasn't, I'm not bad in no way. I can't fight nobody. I definitely ain't shooting nobody. I, 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 I can't do damage to, to nobody else. That is not for me. But I like to bust a little shot when Monty Killer say, bad man kill for fun. I, I like that. It sounds good. And the same thing you see now. Some of these youths I see in busting shots to these things. Like I see another young brother sings violence, right? But I see some, some, um, some people on stage with young brother when he's singing his, um, his songs more crude on the hypersexual side, right? I could call it that. And I seen some of them on stage there who's good, good Catholic singing in choir and saying, them ain't not, them ain't not that. So every youth have a little rebellious thing in them where they want to do something they ain't supposed to do and bust some shot for some gangster music. We all see it. We all see all these Western and them busting shot when, 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 um, me and all these people named Six Boss or whatever the hell these people name is singing this song, they busting shot. So I'm not against that. I applaud Sonny Bling though for saying that the music could be deleterious to society and he not playing it on the radio and he doesn't think other artists should play it on the radio either. I think the two things could be true. If I on radio, I mean, I have a broadcast and I'm not playing certain things. That is just my choice. I, I have, I survive a certain part of my life and avoid certain things and I don't see the value in playing that. I like, I I, I think I would source it. Let me come here and play some happy music and play some things where I feel could be edifying and beneficial to people and who listen listen I, i'm sure you could make a much more popular podcast if you come here and you play 
Rebel Six and Kill Lion and talk about who wore and who and who which which one of them six get gone down on the avenue. You could do that. They let them do that. Die for them. My good. I not doing that. I and I, I'm with Sonny Bling on this. I, Sonny Bling, like me, Sonny Bling is a big old man with wife and children. What the hell he gonna look like coming and sing these kind of things when that is not the life he live in? I I I I could applaud any youth who doing that. That's for them. That's not for me. I too big and old to be promoting that kind of thing. I don't see the benefits of it for me or for anybody else who listening to it. I come here to play happy music. <laughs> so I'm a little bit surprised when Sonny Bling, who to me is one of the most respected people in media in Trinidad and Tobago, Sonny Bling is he's him. I remember when Sonny Bling first come on Synergy with a big foil chain and making a, a, a sort of a spectacle like a caricature. And it was bad when he did it the first time. That was 20-something years ago. This man has been around for a long time. He's a stalwart in music, in music, media, and entertainment. And Trinidad, everybody knows who's Sonny Bling. From Synergy days, as a pass-through man in Synergy, to one of the top personalities in Synergy, now to one of the top personalities on the road. I also feel like as, as jokey and character-like as he is, when you listen to Sonny Bling on an evening on your radio, he, he talking some sense. It's not. It's not. It's not just garbage and passing time and filling the time. <laughs> he have a he have a decent radio show and he has some good perspectives and so on. I I don't know if I agree with everything that he say. I don't know if I need to. I don't know if it's necessary at all. So I find it disheartening if he takes this stance. This is not a new fight. This is not some new guy who following a program. This is a man who have a following. I've never listened to a show called Rip the Grand Lick. Rip the gl- rip. How the hell he say that? Rip the glue and lick the paper. <laughs> right when you listen to him on that show, this man have a following. So if he take that stance and he decide on that, how then a program manager or his boss, he say the manager, come and tell him change the topic. I I I, I wanted to just shed some light on that because I'm sure that whoever that manager is, that's no young boy who promoting gunting on the streets. That's a big old man. So that 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 is, I find that to be worrying. More from the standpoint, not not. Gun song versus non gun song, but more who Sonny Bling is and what he represents and his following. And uh, a manager could come and tell him, take a stand. So, let me tell you something, right? But for, for all the people who's be telling me, but I prefer to listen to this than listen to Radio One. Why ain't going to look for Radio One? Why don't want Radio? This is one of the reasons I, I can't. Um, I'm not going to feel right if somebody come, and I'm not saying that that's the case here, but it made me wonder if they're saying, like, listen, this is what's selling, this is what he's listening to, you have to play that. Change the topic, stop bad talking, and this is what we're going with. I I I, I added that onto the story, right? Because all he said was only the manager tell me change the topic. That's all I seen on the art on the post. But it made me wonder a little bit. And I can't deal with that. You're not gonna come and tell me. <laughs> I had to play. What do you mind here? I got I got that's not for me. If I if I don't like it, I, if I don't like the song here, me are playing it. And I, I had the choice to do that and I could stay away from whatever topics I want to. And I don't have to worry about... I always remember listening to radio when... Was it Robert Amar? It was Robert Amar's station. And uh, announcer had come on talking about something. Pol- Political-wise, right? And then the manager, if it's not Amar himself, is a manager in the station, come on and say, no, cut, cut off this now. Cut off this. You can't be bad talking to p and You can't be bad talking. This was live on the air. And he's saying, how you all make money to pay all you? Because he getting political ads. So he's saying that you're spoiling my political ads and that's why he's not to pay you. So I don't have them kind of budget concerns. I could, I have my low budget little system here and my make my own mistakes and edit for myself and delete the whole damn episode by mistake and had to re-record it. And saying, let me go through that where I could decide what I want to put out and what I want not don't want to put out and how I want to say and edit what I say wrong and so on. Better I stick to that. But as we on budget, as we on budget, we talked about the budget last week, right? And I, I want to send um, condolences to all the listeners to this podcast who are affected by this um, this million dollar increased tax amount, right? 80 grand a month. Salute to all you. <laughs> Money like dirt listening here. I'm uh, sorry that's all you had to pay more tax, but... Budget-wise, Tobago Carnival seems to have got... Now, remember, Tobago have a carnival, right? Salute to everybody who was in Miami Carnival. But Tobago have a carnival, too. I mean, all you ain't taking in Tobago Carnival. You're not paying attention to that at all. Well, it seems as though Tobago has gotten a little bit of a budget cut for their carnival. And uh, they're receiving less money than they did last year. And I mean... <laughs> the question is, should they? What do you think? All you think Tobago... <laughs> We doing Tobago our wickedness. Talk on the ground is that 
me say so. I hear people say so. Talk on the ground is that Rowley ain't trying to get nobody no money into Bego and let them suffer so THJ could get votes out and make up get regular PDP thing and PNM could get back in power. That's <laughs> <laughs> what song say. Me don't know true, but that's what song say. But I'm going to Elizabeth Gonzalez, Gonzalez in The Guardian. She says... Tobago's 2023 carnival is being staged at a cost of $12 million. This was announced yesterday in a press release by the Division of Tourism, Culture, Antiquities, and Transportation. That's a ministry. What is antiquities? The island's carnival season will run from October 27 to 29. This year's carnival will see the participation of 54 bands in the small, medium, and large categories. The division said the budget of $12.5 billion will cover subventions to interest groups, logistics, infrastructure, and other related expenses for this year's uh, festivities. However, the figure represents a decrease in the $17 million budget from last year's inaugural Tobago Carnival. The div- division said preparations for Tobago Carnival are in full swing, as evidenced by the recent promotional activity held in Trinidad. Did they have promotional activity in Trinidad? I missed that. Uh, what else is important in this article? <laughs> Nothing. Budget going down from 17 to 12. What, what, what else is as a percentage? Nearly one third is almost a one third cut in the budget. <laughs> now, again, Tobago came out with this carnival. And the idea was to be self-sufficient. I uh, somehow remember the idea of um, uh, Grenadian consultants being brought in to help them with Tobago Carnival because the Tobago Carnival apparently resembled more of a Grenada type festival than Trinidad being a big big festival right they wanted the intimacy of Grenada so they hire consultants from there and they don't need any help from Trinidad and so on so uh, I haven't I ain't seen no big set of complaints about the budget going down from 17 to 12 if they cut that by one third again next year that should go down to about 8 if they do that again so in no time at all Tobago will be paying for its own carnival it might take about 5 years or so to get there but it seems as though that is where they're headed and at least for as long as PDP is in charge you're going to get a budget cut every time <laughs> so I'm hoping that Tobago does a good job with it I think it could only benefit the country if Tobago carnival becomes its own independent product i wish trinidad and tobago could work together closer to do as was it suggested make a brand out of this so that we have a trinidad carnival and a tobago carnival that are different but related but this idea that tobago has its own carnival that is completely disconnected i do not understand the point of it at all it's like from a branding standpoint right i i find one of the best branding companies i i use this as an example in class all the time you see kiss kiss know how to sell product because kiss Develop over the years what you call brand equity with something called bread, right? So you know kiss bread? <laughs> it's you no know, joke kiss bread they sell in this country. And all they like, all they say, all they don't like kiss bread. That selling. So what kiss is doing they introduce a new product? Is this put the name kiss on all of it? Is kiss bread, kiss corn bread, kiss sweet bread, kiss hops, kiss fruit slice, kiss brownie. Ki- they, they using the name kiss. <laughs> to introduce every single product they bring out to the market and as soon as you hear the ad on the radio the product is on the shelves because they have relationships with Massey Extra Foods Persads all the biggest groceries Price Smart all the Super Farm all the gas stations they already have products going there so what they must do is pull up with the van and say here now we have brownie now, you know, we just make brownie now. We sell some brownie, they put brownie, people go buy it. And and of course, the gas station go take some. They'll say, well, Papa, let's not pack it. <laughs> and when it's selling good, they just say, well, order back and next crate. They kiss goody, kiss, bring all them thing, bring all. Uh, because Kiss spent a long time building a very strong brand name. And I want you to understand that they have the choice to name the brownie something else. They could call that Corey's brownie. That bong to sell. <laughs> that bong to sell. The problem is, initially, it's harder to sell because nobody don't know where that. Nobody don't know what that is. And it would be harder for somebody to just walk in a store and pick up Corey's brownie than it would be pick up Kiss brownie. So Kiss has introduced real new products to the market all the time, seamlessly, because of how good the name Kiss is. Back to Trinidad Carnival. We have a brand name that is globally recognizable. It's on tour globally until it come back here and we set the standard for what is carnival, right? Everywhere in the world. You're talking about Japan, Berlin. If I was fighting war in Palestine, we should put one over there. Everywhere in the world that have a carnival, our style carnival, 
does everything that they could possibly do to tie the carnival to our carnival, including hire all our artists, have the same set of promoters, all the same songs playing, the same format with truck on the road and all them things, uh, uh, juve fet, breakfast fet, brunch, post lunch brunch, night fet, wet fet, dirty fet. Paint fed, all those things they take that they trying their best to associate themselves with Trinidad Carnival. But Tobago <laughs> Tobago decide to make courage brownies <laughs> <laughs> and try to have something that is so complete for what I don't know, eh? for what I don't know. I guess it, it comes down to wanting to control their own budget, right? And control their own destiny and so on. And not suffer these very things where somebody could come and tell you the budget cut and you're going where you're going. But I, I would love to see Trinidad and Tobago as a twin island nation that we are. Just work together and get these things. Okay, so saw these things out. This this is not this is not that difficult. This is not that difficult. We can we can tie all these festivals together, whether it be Soka Monarch panorama all the different things could be tied together and make this distinct just like kiss bread is distinct from kiss brownies you could make it distinct but use what you call the brand equity that we've already all, already created to make this into a bigger thing much faster while introducing this to the world very very slowly and unfortunately i'm feeling like if at some point we could be talking about Tobago had a carnival. We've been talking about this in Haddon. We've been talking about this in past tense. Because one of the first things I see <laughs> is that um, the budget cut like it's affecting things already. I want you to listen for a second for me to Tobago Soka Monarch entries. Fishy, fishy, it's snapper, redfish, tuna, <laughs> saltfish, cavalli, bonito. It doesn't matter the type of fish, just bring them all out. We yes. pull insane. <laughs> we pull insane. <laughs> we pull insane, insane, insane. Yes. We pull insane. <laughs> Tell a gal this, uh, <laughs> get over here. Get, get, get over here. Get over here. We got enough back on our legs. Yeah, yeah. fishy, fishy, fishy. In, in, fish in the next one, in the next one. Dance, 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 Ah, boy, singing up for you, bro. Guys, I'm out here. Jersey saying Tobago Channel. <laughs> Olio, give back Tobago the five million dollars now. Thing is so hard. Only than taxing. If you make it more than a million, the tax going up. Take some of that tax money and give back. It's seventeen million Tobago need at minimum. If it's, if if at twelve million, this is equality we gain for a soccer man. Huh? Let me start afresh now. Let me, let me do this over in such a way that we could put out our... Let me do embarrass myself. <laughs> let me do... Let me do that, that, that could never be what Ole, Ole, Ole referring to as, as a soccer monarch. That, 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 that. Come on. That is highly, highly embarrassing. We, we, we must not stoop to this level. If it's five million extra they need, we have that somewhere. We have that somewhere. Just don't do the restoration of the Red House again. Just delay it for a year. And you'll get about 20 of them $5 million that you could put back into this thing. We, 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 we can't be doing this. But again, Tobago Carnival is up and coming. We're looking forward to the Tobago Carnival and what it brings. Uh, it's a unique idea and experience. I hope more of it comes. I, I think the, um, with being such a new of uh, novel thing, all the who is who and the people who like to post for the gram and show that they're there and we're not there and they miss, we fear missing out and all the, you know what I mean? They're going to go for Tobago Carnival anyway, so it's probably going to sell out and be a success. But I remember last time it was a problem until the weekend of, let me do this thing properly now, man, and build it into something good so that it, it sustains and it becomes its own revenue generating product for us since we are no more oil and gas. I, I need to cleanse, I need to cleanse the place a little bit. You know? I need to cleanse from the... Uh, pulling scene, pulling scene. I had to go back to, again, one of the most distinct voices in soca music to, 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 to get us out of this morass that we just find ourselves in trying to listen to this fella, right? The last year in Tobago Carnival, I remember this artist in particular putting on a show, and I guess it's October, but. Uh, rainy, it's typically rainy season in October. If you're in Trinidad, you would know that 
is is not been a regular October. This place hot like hell. It's have nowhere hot like here right now. We not we not we not. A man tell me we have a solar storm. I didn't even know that was a thing, but we here and we feeling the heat and are willing to accept about two more weeks of this heat. Who has to negotiate with God? About two more weeks of this heat if Tobago could get a dry carnival. Because if I remember right, Tobago carnival rained out very badly last year. If you remember, Burner Boy was about two, three hours late. He had to perform in the rain. Many people who stood, stood there and wait in the um that, pl- that park in Plymouth who was waiting for him had to leave because of the amount of rain and it was getting muddy and things. So people would have paid stay the whole night and not see any performance. And I remember this artist suffering from that a little bit. I see her doing her Instagram live pretty much in tears, basically apologizing to her fans for what was poor organization and so on. But, again, she's easily one of the greatest and most distinct voices in the history of the genre. And I hope she do her show this year. And I hope is a winner. Taking this. Slash cool effect champion of the world, you can't beat you. Know? <laughs> As you're not here, but you feel to be in a groove in a daylight fed drinking first thing in the morning, one of the greatest songwriter, too. You know, not just singer and, just singer and songwriter, some of, some of your greatest hits. Not your bats responsible for it. Right? Should I jump on to um licensing now? Tobago Carnival, we're hoping for the best. We have a few episodes to go before that, so as it unfolds, we'll continue to cover it. But um, on the topics of budgets and money, right. Again, into licensing office, some some little um some very Trinidadian stories here, right? Very very Trinidadian. <laughs> I read it from the Guardian here. Licensing division employees charged with misbehavior. This is by somebody from the Guardian. A motor vehicle inspector, one, and a temporary clerk, one, employed with licensing division in Kearney have been slapped with charges of misbehavior in public office arising out of a collaborative exercise between the fraud squad and the transport commissioner, Clive Clark. Transport Commissioner has taken a zero tolerance approach to current practices within the licensing division and promise. Um, Clive. <laughs> Clive, when you say you take a zero tolerance approach to. <laughs> well, let me read it again. Eh? Take a zero tolerance approach to current practices within the licensing division. As of when? <laughs> As of what point? Because it was interesting that when this article came out last week, the very day after these people were arrested and charged, we had a day of total licensing. <laughs> Remember the day of total policing when they shut down the whole country? They had a day of total licensing when licensing officers was out and about in full strength. 
having roadblocks all over the place to check people, inspection and whatever, whatever car defect, what do you call them things? Fitness, road fitness for your vehicle and charging people and cause a huge amount of traffic. I want to say last week, either Thursday or Friday evening, all over the country had traffic because they have total licensing. But um, the transport commissioners say you have a zero tolerance approach. So I was wondering, and my partner one was asking me if, if the two things related, if the idea of arresting people and charging them for corruption have anything to do with a day of total licensing. But, you know, Errol Super said, 49, a motor vehicle inspector, one of Kunupia and Sudesh Ramda Kisun. Sudesh Radha Kisun. 27. So they should too young for this. What the hell is wrong with you? A temporary clerk one employed in the licensing division in Carney, also of Kunupia, were charged with misbehavior in public office, while Adrian Mohammed, 51, a former an information computer technician or IT guy of La Romaine, was charged with two counts of uttering forged documents arising out of the investigation. The, the victim reported to police that in 2022 he began... He, he being the registered owner of a black-colored Nissan Navara, why well, is always a Nissan, a Nissan Navara motor vehicle, visited the licensing office on Rice and Road to verify some information in relation to the vehicle. There, there, he was informed that the vehicle was allegedly transferred to another person. The victim denied selling or transferring the vehicle or authorizing anyone to do so on his behalf. A report of the matter was made to the transport commissioner who, reports, who forwarded the report to fraud squad. Oh, so Clark... Report coming to you that you're taking. You're not taking a zero tolerance approach. You're just taking any information you were to get and read your desk. You will deal with it. You're not really seeking out corrupt. I got you. Okay, cool. Investigations revealed that the senior licensing officer and temporary clerk had allegedly fraudulently and corruptly prepared, signed, and submitted transfer forms and other supporting documents in relation to the transfer of the vehicle in question. Um, Superside and Radical soon each granted bail in the summer 100,000. Uh, with a surety and whatsoever, and granted with one or something. Okay, so uh, licensing her corruption. This is a revelation. <laughs> this is news. You know what I mean? This is news and newsworthy. Um, we shocked. We shocked to hear anything about that. Uh, to me, it sounds very, very trendy. And fast forward to answer, answer Bank. I think they have enough to charge a different person. A BKFX Clark 1, temporary Clark 2, vehicle inspector 5. It's have enough to charge licensing people every single day in this. Make what nobody say. I watching something the other day that's showing the amount of police vehicles have in Waller Field just abandoned. Parts missing. Uh it, it crashed. They say some Hilux cost the state four hundred thousand when they crash a brand new Hilux. And thing. These things are going to happen, right? And if you're buying uh Vehicles that are not equipped for that purpose. You're just buying regular off-the-shelf commercial vehicles for police and you're bound to be in this position. The thing about it is, I remember reading a, po- a report several years ago about these yards, right? If you know the yards where they store police cars or the yards where they store vehicles that was in road traffic accidents or stolen vehicles or any uh, things that where is evidence related, so you, they, they have it there. You, you usually see one when you just... Pa- approaching sea lots in Port of Spain, but they have them all over the country. I remember reading a report about how much um how much a uh, transmission part and engine part and body parts and thing missing from them vehicles are common thing. It's a common thing. The article went in depth about police vehicles that no longer functional, but when you check it, all the parts gone. So it's either somebody taking the parts from inside there and selling it, or it might be passing strange that several police officers, personal vehicle is the same set of vehicles that is by. So if the police buying Vitara for the police force, policeman buying Vitara for their wife. You never have to buy a part again. We don't have to go by Maturas. <laughs> but I hear so. Me and me, no. I, I, I hear so. Anyway, Answer Bank, this is unrelated to this, right? Answer Bank, this is by Jada Lautu from Newsday. Answer Bank sues six ex-employees used car dealers for fraud. Now, I want you to know that Answer Bank, Answer Merchant Bank has been around for a while, but if I'm not mistaken, Answer kind of... A little new, sure. A little new. So a high court judge, uh, the, the goal here is to transfer or change Answer Merchant Bank into Answer Bank, right, which is a commercial bank. A high court judge has frozen the assets of six former employees of Answer Merchant Bank to the tune of $27 million. The interim order was made by Justice Frank Sipersad on Monday as part of a claim that the bank has filed against the six former employees and six roll-on, roll-off vehicle dealers. The bank alleges that its former employees and the six dealerships engaged in a conspiracy to present fraudulent documents and or make fraudulent representation to the bank over $27 million in loans. <laughs> it is alleged 
that the former employees breached the terms of their contracts and conducted themselves in a manner which was likely to destroy or seriously damage the relationship of trust between them and the bank. The bank has also accused defendants of wrongfully engaging in actions with intent to injure the bank and cause losses by unf- unlawful means in the conspiracy to defraud and conceal their actions. So apparently they say with these used car dealers had some questionable loans and things between them and the bank trying to sue to recover the money. All these fellas' assets get frozen. The ex-employees... One of them wife too, and and uh, uh, and the, the the car dealers. They say the judge apparently come and tell them here what's going on. All of the thing frozen until this case done, and you're gonna be able to buy a little groceries and so on. But I need to ensure that we we on top of this. So as it says here in the filing, they claim the bank also applied for the injunction to freeze the assets of former employees. See, Passat said this court's jurisdiction was founded in the civil proceeding rules, and so, as such. Orders can be granted when it appears likely that the claimants will recover judgment or if there are reasons to believe the defendant had assets to meet the judgment in whole or in part, but may take steps to ensure these assets are no longer available or traceable. In other words, put it in your mother and them name, you know what I mean? They're they, they making sure that all they can move back the money because it's looking like all your fellas guilty. That's what the judge is saying. That's my interpretation of what the judge is saying. But these two stories, while unrelated, they tell a story about Trinidadian this, right? Where... We is a place where if you could if you could get away with a thing, <laughs> you couldn't get away with a thing. So having a partner in the bank or having a partner in licensing or a link up between none of these things sound very strange for who we are as trainees. This is very much the way we operate. And just coming over the heels of the budget last week, right? Where you could people always talk about the hardships in Trinidad and Tobago and the fact that Prices going up and the government is doing nothing for we. Now if we make a little million, they're taxing me a little more. You know what I mean? We're working towards that. So I had to keep my... If, you, if your salary going up, you had to try and say, your goal was to get a hundred. Yeah, forget a hundred. You had to stay under 80. Now if you want to pay the same tax rate as the others. Against the backdrop of rising fuel prices, lower oil and gas production, lower oil and gas prices. Well, a little war now making oil prices start to go back up. It was... You tend to find out everything here seems to indicate that it's hard times coming in the economy. But we still live real good because as I tell you in the article the other day, new car sales is out of here. I I, 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 I looked talking about some people about some new car sales and cars getting sold out before they reach trend. I called Hyundai the other day. They said we had nothing to sell. All of them buying. So <laughs> the reality on on paper versus the reality we see in is two whole different worlds. But I mean, who is me to talk about that? I really just come to play some of the greatest voices in Sky. So and one of them is this voice that I'm about to play, who I want to wish a happy birthday, a happy belated birthday. I come a little late, but a happy belated birthday to this man. Because we couldn't talk about the voices in Soka without going back to the man who created. <laughs> And he telling me a story about Trinidad here too, you know, because no matter how hard it gets, new car go sell. It's fine to a bed in the hospital. And we can't hear a word from Health Minister Kamal Black dirty water we had to drink Was a safe clean but the smell is stink And my friend, the money, money ain't no problem My friend, the shouting, money ain't no problem Whoa, yeah You can't even use your phone to dial a prayer And it's like nobody in care Stop corruption, yeah. All them wheeling and dealing big shops was in confusion. Whoa. They threatened to kill, but 
But they keep on still, so the least up They pass a bill, my friend They're money, money ain't no problem My friend, don't doubt me Money ain't no problem Full of smoke Whoa. Only making foolish mistakes And calling joke Yeah So much of people On the streets today And we can't build a home For them to stay My, my friend The boy Money ain't no problem yeah. My friend Don't doubt me Money ain't no problem This is Caribbean Vibes. Our roads are the worst in the Caribbean. We have the most traffic jams you have ever seen. Yeah. When it rains, for the spell and pain, them drain on the strain, so it's flood again. My friend, don't doubt me. Money, money ain't no problem. problem. Yeah. My, My friend. friend. Money, money ain't no problem. That one of the greatest voice calypso of all. He said the roads is the worst in the Caribbean. The traffic is the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, I'm running out of time. I have some things to talk about and I'm pushing them things to next week. <laughs> I'm running out of time. Uh, uh, sorry, I had to talk about it. I know I front load the episode about, about an hour worth of my experience over the weekend, eh? but I had to talk about that. Uh, again, to some of the voices in Calypso before I close off on the last article, uh, they, have, they have some people I cannot leave out of this, right? And one of them people I find again to not get enough respect for who she is and what she's do. Is one of the greatest voices in Calypso and Soka. Also, one of the people who could sing, sing, right? I complained about Marshall and thing, but I don't want to end up like all you who complain about the Venezuelan woman and then don't support the Trini. What is the Trini name who represents me and Miss Grant again? No, we even know. But this is one of the voices who her command, the way she delivers, the way she performs, all of it. It's top tier for any genre of music, right? <laughs> and I want to, I, I just pick in one of the many songs that is my favorite. And I find you all, 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 all don't give the woman enough respect. Lucy, Lucy. Queen of I grew up as a real good girl, always home, don't go nowhere. As soon as I was introduced, the carnival, they say, I lose. Oh, down on the ground. Walking, walking up the bottom and it's dragging, dragging all over tongue and they say I lose it. Was never a party at my school bazaar, I used to go. But since I was introduced to back and now they say I lose. When I drop it hot and I whine it on top the speaker box and I grind it and I don't want to stop and they call me.
loose somewhere get loose get loose somewhere get loose hey i run out of time so i have to i have to play this right because when you're talking about distinct voices i think there's one voice that comes to mind don't call man tell me all the people and leave out there no you can call man tell me who i'm playing who i i can't remember i'm not a young man right <laughs> but in anything that's talking about the voices in calypso they have a man who you had to play for sure <laughs> things to talk about well and add a cut in. Good luck to the Soka Warriors come Friday. We need CONCACAF Nations League. We undefeated thus far. We have Guatemala to play down here. I see uh, Alvin Jones come back into the side. Who Alvin Jones is a big side killer. So I expect to see great things from him. A few new names in the mix along with some other people who, uh, who would have been called up before and get called back to the side. Right? I have why, why they succeed on the article here. But uh, I'm going to try and go to... <laughs> But the game starts at 9 o'clock, so it's going to be a little rough. 9 o'clock is a late time in the night to start a football game. But if you could, go and support the Soka Warriors Friday. We're looking like we're on your way back. I see some clips from in the dressing room, too, that I'm impressed by, uh, particularly the speeches and the way uh, the captain, Aubrey David, dealing with the team and talking to the team as a band of brothers. When you see a locker room looking together like that, remember the last article we hear is that he lost the locker room, eh? But that locker room looking like a tight band of brothers, and I, I wish them the best. My intention was to end the article, then this <laughs> with Maximus Dan Soka Warriors, because again, another distinct voice. But I run out of time, so we had to take some terror before we head out. <laughs> Taking a piece of this too. I was soft all over as I'm getting old, old, old. The climate inside me was very cold. Tell me if you could release. But since I land back home and I eat crab and callaloo. 
notice I get as hard as a police photo. Now I know Kalalu has certain ingredients. Don't mind how a man is weak, it gives him endurance. I made my first romance with Elaine. He said I must come back again. He said, Terra, darling, you have made your name and fame. I said, darling, that may be true, but I only feel nice since I clash with you. I was soft before, but now I prepare for war. Terra was soft before, but now he prepare for war. Terra was soft before, but now he prepare for war. Kalalu is a side dish, I love it all, all, all. But when I eat it, Peter does pay for Paul. If my sister lay down near to me, yes, I kill she dead. I mean, dead, dead. Why? Because I'm properly fed. I don't know if it's the slipperiness from the okra. But when I eat Kalalu, I feel young like you. And if I fly, just touch me, neighbor. That does get me irritable. And that is the time I'm out for trouble. I'm warning you. Well, if you think I'm telling lies, ask Elaine, she gon' tell you why I was soft before, but now I'm prepared for war. Terra was soft before, but now we prepare for war. Terra, I want to tell you that they invent better things than Kalalu these days. <laughs> small I live in it women and all I could get from them is false children. children don't make blue eyes and some like shiny any kind of child make girl make she stick me but I'm waiting on her patiently it's about 10 months now she ain't kiss me and you know the bold face someone must tell me any kind of child that born in me outside is the daddy and for such shame I don't tell nobody Chinese children calling me daddy you know my mother does want to beat me when Chinese children calling me daddy I look a black light jet and she just like to have baby still Chinese children Calling me daddy. But it's left, right, in front, and behind me. Chinese children calling me daddy. I met up with the Miller in 1940. Three months in the way, but annoying to me. But I'm so stupid and woman crazy. I had noticed at all that she making baby. So she started getting stouter and stouter. I made a tiny child six months after. Then telling me I am the father. And only six months ago, I know this Imelda. That's why I shame I don't tell nobody. Chinese children calling me daddy. You know my mother does want to beat me when. Chinese children calling me daddy. I took a black light jet and she just liked her baby still. Chinese children calling me daddy. But it's left, right in front and behind me. Chinese children calling me daddy. Any, uh, 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 listen, I'll leave you with this one for sure. I'm going to tear on them as I go down this bag. It's be a long road, you know. But I want to leave you with one that I was talking about in this episode, right? As I tell you, when when Sozet called me, it's serious. So when she said my message, it's serious, right? <laughs> and in her words, echoed by the great mighty terror, we keep in Calypso clean. What a Calypso's coming to? This is a question I am asking you. Too much vulgarity in songs. We got to think of the younger ones. Yes. Make your songs much more decently. And that would even apply to me. Because it leaves a bad impression on the profession. Yes, we can make songs much cleaner. Yes. And we can still be jocular. We would still be popular forever and ever. Children growing day by day, repeating everything we say. So let's keep Calypso the clean way. Man can 
something smarty now and then. Yes. But that must not be Calypso trend. Calypso's are considered highly. Throughout the world, friends, you must agree. When an artist stands on a stage, he should turn to the cleanest page. And don't allow immorality to penalize his integrity. For we can make so much cleaner. And we can still be jocular. We would still be popular forever and ever. Children growing day by day, repeating everything we say. So let's keep Pali souls the clean way. Hey, well, you have a good weekend over in the middle of October. Look how we get come to the end of the year already now. But it is Calypso History Month, so we'll be representing for Calypso History Month as we always do. But only have a safe week, a good week, have a productive week. I hope all your dreams come true. Pick up some good habits this week too, right? Don't forget our part. And I will talk to all you next week. Bye. Take for instance, this is Spoiler. He was a Calypso master. I do the song he would never sing. Yet he is dead, gay Calypso king. He always did have the audience repeatedly calling for his performance. So let us take him for example and make our songs more respectable. Yes, we can make some much cleaner and we can still be jocular. We would still be popular forever and ever. Children growing day by day. Repeating everything we say So let's keep Calypso The clean way